Because once again, if you say like, oh, the goal of my Pinterest is to get me clients and you are not getting increase that says, I found you on Pinterest, you're going to get discouraged, right? And you're going to stop doing something. But that's not the goal of Pinterest. The goal of Pinterest is just to drive traffic to your website, qualify traffic, right? Once again, mm. this is not like, I'm not getting people that live in South Africa getting into my website. That will make no sense because I'm not going to travel to South Africa to photograph a wedding, right? Yeah. So I'm getting people that is in my city or people that come from New York to get married in Miami and they found, you know, my images on Pinterest and that's how I start the conversation with them. Or like, I I, I, yeah. when I say to start a conversation, it means, I mean, I'm not literally talking to them. They're getting to know me. They're seeing yeah. the images. They like it. They're going to my website. They're spending time on my website. That's the kind of conversation that I'm talking about. When I first started my wedding photography business back in 2011, I made just $5,000 in my business. Now, I bring in multiple six figures per year while working only 30-hour weeks serving my dream couples. I'm here to help you discover that it's so possible to have what you want, when you want in your business so that you can create the life you've always dreamed of and deserve. Yay, welcome everybody to another episode of the Shine and Thrive podcast, the podcast for photographers all about personal development and business development. Uh, and I'm so excited to have Carolina Guzik today on the podcast because we're going to be talking about Pinterest strategy, which is something that I know I can learn a ton about as well. And just to give you a little bit of background info about Carolina, uh, she is a wedding photographer based in Miami. Uh, her work is incredibly beautiful. I love her work so much, so bright and colorful. And definitely when you look at her work, you think Miami, it's incredible. Um, and she is also the host of the Tog Republic podcast, which is also a podcast for photographers. Uh, and of course, she's also an educator. Uh, Carolina specializes in teaching photographers how to create website traffic from Pinterest to their website so that they can generate more bookings. And after all, I know we all just want to generate more bookings. That's why we do what we do, right? So I'm so excited to connect with Carolina. And Carolina, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Hey, how are you doing today? Good. So good. The sun is shining here. Is it where you are? It is. It's always shining in Miami. I mean, awesome. not, uh, we have like two months where it rains a lot, but overall we have a lot of sunshine. And now I hate you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. I always like dream about just having a never ending summer, but then I'm just like, but the seasons are nice. The season changes, but like summer is definitely my favorite month. I'm a summer girl. Um, I don't know about you. Like, do you like, have you, do you like different seasons or are you like, nope, I'm happy to be in I'm Miami. happy. I'm happy here. I mean, I, I guess for vacation is nice, but like, I wouldn't enjoy my sister's living in Toronto. So like, I wouldn't enjoy like a winter in Toronto. No, that's yeah. not okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm so happy for you. I'm genuinely happy for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to jump into just a couple icebreaker questions, uh, just so we can all get to know you a little bit. Um, and yeah, all you can do is basically, it'll be a question. And then you can just say the first thing that comes to mind, it could either be a one word answer or just a mini explanation of it. So are you ready? Oh, go ahead. Awesome. Okay. So the first question is, what is the most useful thing that you own? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that should be so simple. And um, I guess my, my, my AC, I don't know. Is that a thing? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I love that so much because other night, otherwise nights would be unbearable. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. That's so general. Every house in Miami has an AC, but like if, if I wouldn't have one, I'd be really uncomfortable. So I don't know. I guess it's the most useful thing other than the internet, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. Um, okay. What would be your perfect weekend? So if you had a weekend off and you weren't shooting weddings, what would be your perfect weekend? I would have, if you would, if you had asked me this question, like in 2019, I would be like, oh, a weekend at home, watching movies, doing nothing. But it's been a year of that. So maybe <laughs> uh, it would be kind of like an outing. I, because of the pandemic, I, we, ha we haven't gone out that much. So maybe like a nice restaurant or something like that will be yeah. nice. Oh, for sure. I definitely miss restaurants and good food and just being out and about. That's yeah, so true. So <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, okay. The next question, what is something you are obsessed with? Uh, TV. Oh, <laughs> yes. Shameless, uh, obsessed with any kind of TV. Okay. So a follow-up question. Did you say shameless as in you're shameless about it? Or did you mean shameless the show? I watch the show, uh, but also shameless as in like I would watch uh, anything on TV. Yeah. I mean, awesome. not anything, but like 95% of, you know, reality TV, documentaries, series, movies, like just give me, give me TV. Awesome. <laughs> what's, what's something that you're watching right now? Um, okay. This is, I don't know if, if you guys are into this, but uh, I love Bravo TV. I love the housewives. I love mm-hmm. Top Chef. I love Below Deck. Ah, so bad, but I love all of that. <laughs> I'm also watching, I, I have this, this love for like English accents, but like not in like movies, just like regular people. So I love watching, uh, there's a bunch of like shows on Netflix about like, you know, living mortgage free and how to build your beautiful house, but it's all based in England. So I just oh, <laughs> I love yeah. watching those shows. <laughs> it is so relaxing hearing them speak and just like, oh, that sounds so nice. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's just like, oh, I'm seeing, you know, like different, you know, like, like different towns and things like that I'm like oh this is lovely yeah and you're not alone I also love like reality tv shows and like housewives and right now I'm actually I've never watched it before ever but it started like recently keeping up with the Kardashians and I'm like I totally prejudged them without even knowing who they were and now I'm like oh no like I can see how like they're really cool people and like and I don't know I just love just turning off my brain and just watching how other people live it's just so fascinating I watch episodes like randomly like oh maybe half an episode here but I have never watched like a full season obviously I know who they are and all that but the other day I was thinking like "Mm, I'm running out of things to watch they have 20 (laughs) seasons maybe I should commit to this (laughs) that's exactly what happened yep exactly (laughs) yeah but but I I haven't reached that point yet I'm still you know Bravo is really consistent in like giving me shows after shows so like when one is ending they're hooking me up in another one so like yeah I love Bravo TV that's awesome so you basically work hard and tv hard (laughs) yes yes the other day I was you know talking to my husband about this and he's like when do you watch tv because it's not like I sit in front of the tv like most of the times I'm watching like on my phone so like while I'm editing you know because this is like nonsense tv like you don't need to really fully you know be fully present right so like I'm editing and I have it there on like my little you know (laughs) cell phone here is stand right next to the right next to the computer so you know, that's a good six hours of TV that I'm watching while that's editing. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. That like background noise to just keep you entertained while like yeah. doing something where you have to be half focused because it's kind of like editing just after a while becomes the same. So yeah. Correct. That's Another so one funny. that I love, I don't know if you watch it, is House Hunters Internationals. It is like oh, yeah. my show. It, it gets me really upset every single show and I scream at them <laughs> and, and it, it's maybe not even healthy for me to watch it, but I love it. <laughs> why because of the house that they choose and you're like I wouldn't have chose that one no I, I get so annoyed about like oh we have a $500 budget however we want a penthouse in Paris oh, overlooking yeah. the Eiffel Tower with a chef's kitchen I'm like who are these people this is ridiculous nobody's gonna ask for things like this so yes look at the passion it's like you're a real <laughs> estate agent <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh yeah I definitely so so yeah so that's that's what I enjoy watching Awesome. And then last question. Um, this is totally random. Just felt like asking it. What's your favorite number and why? I, no, no, nobody has ever asked me this number. <laughs> this question. You know, it's so I, random. I, 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 get, I don't have a favorite number. I, That's fine. You know what's yeah. so funny? I was just watching the Kardashians on my l- lunch break and they were like, who, who has a favorite number when they're an adult? Like, are, are you 10? And they're talking to a 40 year old. And now you're like, I don't have a favorite number. I'm like, you know what? I must just be a child still because my favorite number is 22. <laughs> 22. And why is that your favorite number? And I don't know, actually. I just don't know. Ever since I was a little girl, I was like, 22 is my favorite number. That's just how it is. I like the energy oh. of it. <laughs> I'm good. I mean, now, now this question is really probably going to linger in my mind until I come up with a number that I like or something like that. That's so funny. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for answering those random questions. I feel like we got to know you a little bit, had some laughs, always love that. Um, So yeah, let's get to talking about Pinterest. I'm so excited for this. So 
first off, I guess to jumpstart the conversation, um, in what ways can having a Pinterest strategy help a photographer grow their business? Well, creating traffic to your website, right? And creating traffic that is intentional, right? Because creating traffic for the sake of just building, you know, like, hey, I have 200 visitors per day, but like they're not converting. That's kind of like a waste of time, right? But having a tool that is generating traffic to your website of people that is interested in your services is a great asset. We can say that this is kind of like similar to SEO. However, this is something that is a little bit more manageable because the platform is a little bit smaller. We have have less people searching on Pinterest. We have more people looking for like inspirational or aspirational images, and we have plenty of that. So it's easier per se to rank or to be seen. Now, another great thing is to understand that uh, according to the Pinterest data that they release every year, you have 40 million people that are engaged, like 40 million engaged couple using the platform to plan their wedding. So it is a huge market. And if you're a photographer and you're not utilizing it, you're, you're missing, you know, that gigantic number. Obviously, that is a global number. But let's say that within, you know, the Toronto area, there is, you know, I'm, I'm coming up with a number that I'm making up and a number that perhaps you like there is 22 million you know in Toronto uh, looking at Pinterest so like that's people that you're missing out if you are not showing up on Pinterest okay cool and um wow that's so much that I didn't know I didn't actually ever think of I knew Pinterest I thought of it as like a search engine but I never thought of it in the the sense that much more people hang out on Google, but fewer people and more specific and like people like couples, for example, hang out on Pinterest. So yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. And also, so like, for example, if a couple reaches out to you through your inquiry form, Mm -hmm. um, how do you know that they found you on Pinterest? Do they basically, do they say it? Like, do you have a question where have, did you find me or how would you be able to know? I do have that question. However, the answer is a little bit tricky because the client's journey in Pinterest is not a straightforward. It's not like, oh, let's look for a photographer. Oh, I found somebody that I like. I like this picture. I'm going to immediately inquire. I don't think that's how the Pinterest journey happens, right? Mm -hmm. People going to Pinterest, most likely they're like, oh, let's talk about Casa Loma, right? It's a beautiful venue in Toronto area, right? Let's say that they are planning perhaps to have a wedding at Casa Loma. They take a look at it and they're like, I love how it looks. Oh my God, look at all these beautiful images from weddings at Casa Loma. They start to save them. Then when they return to like, oh, let's let's now let's start within the actual planning of the wedding they go back to that Pinterest board they're like oh my god I love the look that these photos have let me take a look at the website because each particular photo that you upload into Pinterest has to have a link to a URL right so let's for example are your images right they take a look at them they're like I completely love this then they're going to go to your website they're going to spend some time on your website maybe they start following you on Instagram so by the time they reach you it has been a lot of a step. So they're probably just going to say, hey, I found you on Google or mm-hmm. hey, I found you on Instagram or I don't remember what I saw you. So Got it's it. not that clear. Have I had clients that tell me, yes, I saw you on Pinterest? I have, but they're not the majority. The majority will say, I found you on Google. Right. That makes sense. Because yeah, if I think of myself, if I put myself in their shoes and I'm planning a wedding, there's so many things that are inspire me along the way that I save. And I'm never going to remember the exact moment that I discovered that person. So Correct. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so um, actually, how long ago did you start implementing uh, this Pinterest marketing strategy into your business? Because I'm curious, like, how long did it take you to start seeing traction of like, oh, this is actually working and you can see the correlation of like, I just started marketing on Pinterest and I do see an influx of inquiries. So I started Pinterest years ago, you know, when it first came out and I was doing exactly what everybody was telling you to do. And I was watching because, you know, I'm into marketing and all that. I was watching what other people in other areas were doing in Pinterest, right? Mostly bloggers. So they were, you know, pinning a lot of images from other people, creating kind of like inspirational boards and all that good stuff. I was doing the same for my images. I was pinning tons of images from other photographers, creating inspirational boards, right? Mm -hmm. And it was okay, but I wasn't seeing like any really a correlation with my website right I was getting a couple of you know a couple of I was gonna say likes but you don't get likes like I was getting a couple of like links to my website but nothing major right so one day I decided I was like well 
I'm going to try things my way. I like to experiment with my own business. I have nothing to lose because I don't have that much traffic. Like if I lose 10, you know, clicks to my website a month, whatever, it doesn't make mm-hmm. a difference. Yeah. So I decided to start using Pinterest kind of like as an extension of my website. And this was about two and a half years ago. So I cleaned all my boards and I just started pinning my images that was very frowned upon within like the blogging community. People were like, oh, you're going to get banned from Pinterest. That's on the way to you to use Pinterest. And I'm like, I mean, I have really nothing to lose. And really mm-hmm. nothing happened. Like I didn't get banned. Nothing happened. But what mm-hmm. happened was like the traffic to my website almost tripled. Wow. Right. And when I start looking at my analytics, I start seeing that people that were coming from Pinterest were hanging in my website for about, you know, a minute, a minute and 20 seconds, which again, that if we're just talking, you know, about drinking coffee, that's nothing. But when we're talking about like traffic to your website, that is a large number. It means that people are getting engaged, you know, Mm -hmm. it means that people are liking what they're seeing. So I was like, okay, this is, you know, this so far for the traffic is working. And then obviously as I started getting more clients and some of them were like, oh, I found you on Google and doing a little bit more kind of like research once they booked me. And I was like, oh, well, let's try to figure out what in Google did you find me? And then like I took a look at like their Pinterest boards and I saw my images pinning in the pin in those boards. I was like, oh, it's not 100% sure, but it seems that they've seen my images in Pinterest because they saved them. So I'm yeah. going to assume that they were part of the traffic, you know, the, the traffic that I see on my analytics. And, you know, that's how that's how we got to see each other. So for me, the main goal is the main goal that my Pinterest account has is just move people off Pinterest into my website, right? And I think that sometimes when we're using marketing strategies, obviously we're like, oh, the main goal is to, you know, obtain clients. And yes, that's kind of like the umbrella, right? That's like the biggest goal. But every single thing that we do in our business has a specific goal that is smaller, right? So for me, Pinterest, the goal of it is drive people into my website. The job of my website is to give people enough information so they submit the inquiry form the job of my (laughs) consultation is get them to book my services right so yeah wow I love how you just broke it down like that that's such a great way to I know again I never thought of it in that way I think I intuitively knew that yeah every different part of our business has a different goal but the way you just explained it was beautifully said I love that so much um Yeah. And it actually, I think it also takes pressure off of like, I need to like start Pinterest. And then if I don't start seeing more bookings right away, like it's not working. And then I'm a failure. It's like, it takes like pressure off because it's like, do you have increased traffic? Is it better than it was before? Yes. Okay. You're doing well. You're you're exactly where you meant to be. So yeah, I love how you explain that. And also when you, when you break it up, when you break it down like this, you can fix what is not working. Right. Because once again, if you say like, Oh, the goal of my Pinterest is to get me clients and you are not getting inquiries that says I found you on Pinterest, you're going to get discouraged. Right. And you're going to stop doing something, but that's not the goal of Pinterest. The goal of Pinterest is just to drive traffic to your website, qualify traffic. Right. Once again, Mm. this is not like I'm not getting people that live in South Africa getting into my website. That will make no sense because I'm not going to travel to South Africa to photograph a wedding, right? So I'm getting people that is in my city or people that come from New York to get married in Miami. And they found, you know, my images on Pinterest. And that's how I start the conversation with them. Or like, and when I say to start a conversation, it means, I mean, I'm not literally talking to them. They're getting to know me. They're seeing images. They like it. They're going to my website. They're spending time on my website. That's the kind of conversation that I'm talking about. Yeah. And I love how you just said, it's an opportunity for us to notice and fix what is not working. Because if you are getting a ton of traffic, but then you're not, your inquiries aren't increasing. It's like, okay, are there updates I can make on my website to my copy or my images? Like what is off or like, you're getting a lot of inquiries, but maybe you're not getting as many bookings. So, Hey, what is my price guide look, looking like? Does it have all the, does it have all the information it needs and all of that? So that's also a great way to, to look at that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Okay. I was actually going to ask, I feel like I was going to ask, how do you make sure that the content is more intentional? But I think you just answered my question with making sure that you're speaking to the the audience of where your clients would be, right? Well, correct. And we need to think about this. Pinterest is a search engine platform 
pretty much the same as Google. So the same way that we treat SEO is the same way that we're going to treat our Pinterest account, right? So mm -hmm. if I have a Pinterest account and I just have a board that says beautiful weddings, well, that solves nobody's problem. Beautiful mm -hmm. weddings where? What kind of beautiful weddings, right? So we need to go down and be very niche in the kind of things that we are offering and the kind of services that we provide and the kind of locations that we serve. So we understand that the people looking for those items are actually people that are interested in our services. I want to talk back to, you know, Casa Loma in Canada, right? Let's say that you have beautiful photos and you just said, uh, beautiful uh, fall wedding, Mm -hmm. But where? Yeah. Tell me where you are, right? Because if I am in Toronto and I'm looking for venues to get married at, I'm never going to find your board because that has nothing to do with Toronto. Yeah, yeah. So you need to be specific in your city, in the kind of weddings that you're photographing, in the aesthetic of weddings. All that is going to niche you down to like the client that is looking for those specifics. Okay, got it. happens to the best of us. We get fired up about starting our photography business and then when we make it happen, we feel on top of the world. But then, bam, it hits us. We feel stuck with no clue of what our next best move should be. I know what that's like because I've been there many times before, but with the right guidance, I was actually able to gain clarity and achieve the next level of success I wanted in both my business and my life. So if you're ready for me to help you discover what it is that you really want next and how to make it happen one small step at a time, then head over to saramonica.com forward slash coaching and book your coaching session with me. Remember, never stop learning and never get comfortable because your dreams lie just outside of your comfort zone. That's saramonica.com forward slash coaching. And I would love to know, so for example, let's say we do have a blog post about this Casa Loma wedding, right? And we want mm -hmm. to drive traffic to that blog post on our website. Um, like, what would your strategy be around that? And how many pins, like, would you create like one pin a week for that blog post and make sure that the graphics are different, but you keep repost reposting about that blog post? Or is that not how you do it? Like, what would your... Um, idea around that being? I'm a little more laid back <laughs> when it comes to Pinterest, but it's because I have created so much traffic right now that now mm -hmm. I can relax a little bit. But okay. a good strategy could be, right, we have this, let's say, blog post about Casaloma, and you can create, you know, you can create as many images as you want about it, right? With different images, different texts, you know, but let's say, let's be realistic. Let's say that you create five different pins about Casa Loma, right? One could be a picture of the actual venue. One could be a romantic photo. One could be kind of like a table decor, whatever. And two other ones about like something else, like the wedding party and I don't know, another decoration things right mm -hmm. and you can you know write beautiful text about it you can actually pin images that have no text but the thing like no overlay text but the thing with pinterest is like every single photo needs to have a title and needs to have a description so there is two different um lines within the the pin that you can optimize for you know a good seo or for a mm -hmm. good you know a strategy for search engine optimization so we're gonna get detail and instead of just saying wedding in toronto we're gonna talk about like you know wedding at casa Loma in toronto right and then yeah. in the description we can talk about how this is an elegant wedding that was romantic and how the gardens at casa Loma are perfect for like an outdoor wedding in the summer or the fall right so now you're utilizing yeah. the venue the style of wedding even the season and all those things are you know hopefully right because there is nothing certain in life hopefully you've done a good enough job that once that pin gets indexed when you get somebody on you know somewhere in the world looking to get married at Casa Loma they're going to come across this pin and the pin is going to be beautiful enough the image is going to be attractive attractive enough for the person on the other side to be like, I want to see more about this and click on that link and land on your website. Okay, got it. And how long do those pins stay searchable? That's actually something that I'm like, I wonder like if you post, if you share a pin, let's say you share those five pins last month, right? Mm -hmm. Then how long do they stay discoverable do you have to keep repinning or are they always to... just there actually pinterest right now is it's frowned upon to repin 
you can create new pins whenever you want. But let's say that you have a pin that is working really well and you're like, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pin it once again. Now they're going to be like, oh, that's kind of a spamming. So we're not going to do that. However, once you create a pin, the pin lives forever on Pinterest. Oh, I wow. have pin, I have actually, and I posted this yesterday on my Instagram stories. Uh, about five years ago, I posted this beautiful over the top baby shower in Miami. Absolutely gorgeous. I get 98% of my clients that are, you know, baby showers, thanks to this pin. Wow. And this one I can really track because when I ask them, they're like, oh, we saw you on Pinterest. This is really easy because it's not as big as a wedding. So people can, yeah. you know, remember a little bit easier when they saw their vendors yeah. or they actually, because the image was so, so beautiful. It was, uh, as I said, it was a very over the top baby shower. They remember the decor very vivid. Mm -hmm. so like, oh, it was a baby shower about this topic. Right. So. The pin, again, I posted it five years ago and it still till today brings me great traffic to my website and clients. So that's one of the benefits of Pinterest. Once you have your pins posted and they have been indexed and all that, they live forever. Now, obviously, you're going to have pins that are so much better than others, right? Currently on my account, I have over 4,000 pins. Mm -hmm. This is great. However, I have out of those 4,000 pins, I have about 20 pins that are like my work my, my, my workhorse, mm -hmm. how I call them. Yeah. Workhorses. <laughs> yeah. Those are the ones that are delivering 60, a hundred, 150 clicks to my website every single month. Wow. Okay. So one of the things on Pinterest is like, I don't, I feel like, let's say Instagram, we have to be so curated and the fit has to make sense and look so pretty in Pinterest. You can allow yourself to make, you know, like mistakes and you yeah. can post a pin that maybe gets no traffic, but it's not going to hurt you either. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. You totally just blew my mind because I don't know why for some reason, because I, I hang out on Instagram a lot in my mind, I had the idea that when you pin to Pinterest, it's kind of acts like a feed and that it's kind of like once, once you posted like two years ago, it's like gone. Like no one's really ever going to come across it again because it's nope. like so far down. So this is like mind blowing. Thank you for sharing. And <laughs> also thank you for being so candid and open about like how many pins you actually have and how many are the ones that are performing the best, the best, the best, because I think it's going to help again, help people feel less discouraged when they're not really seeing those results right away. Right. Correct. I tell my, I tell my students, don't focus in like, you need literally five great pins. That's mm -hmm. what you need. How are you going to know if they're going to be great pins? Really? You don't know until you post them. Yeah. That's really what happens. And also they're seasonal pins, right? Like I have these like 20 pins that work all year round, but every often I get a pin that I'm like, oh, I even forgot that I, you know, pinned this a couple of you know years ago. And when I take a look at my analytics, I'm like, oh, this thing just, you know, send me 15 people to my website. Is it major? No, but those are 15 people that before didn't know about me. Yeah. So I take every single, you know, good traffic that I could get to my website. I love this. Oh my gosh. Okay. And I'm also wondering, so overall, like how much time would you say that you allocate monthly to marketing via Pinterest. I know this might be hard to answer because it seems like you kind of like said, I put it in the work to kind of like get it out there, get it out there. Now I feel like I can relax a bit. So maybe just if you think about someone starting out that wants to, you know, get momentum, how much would you say that they would need to allocate monthly to Pinterest? So before the pandemic, when I had plenty of work, I was doing my Pinterest strategy was working every two months. I was taking two hours. And in two hours, I had plenty of content for two months, mm -hmm. every single day posting about five pins a day. Okay. So that was it. I, you know, schedule two hours of my day and create enough content for two months and, you know, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. After the pandemic, because I don't have that much work to post, I, I really, if I posted maybe 10 pins in the whole year last year, maybe that was a lot but it's still, I'm getting the traffic, right? Because I created already the machine. Now I can relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cool. if you're brand new to Pinterest, the first thing that I want you to understand is very similar as of SEO, right? When you create a blog post, it's not going to go viral 
you know, within a week, right? Unless you're a huge name brand, right? But like, if you are a normal person, just like you and me, and you create a blog post, it might take a couple of months to get momentum, right? Because mm-hmm. it needs to be indexed by Google and, you know, it needs to create some traction. The same thing happens with Pinterest, right? You can upload, uh, let's say 15, 20 beautiful images, you might get really lucky and get one of those images to get a lot of momentum right away. But you should at least expect, you know, about three to six months to start seeing like really good results. Okay, got it. Man, think uh, like I'm just like <laughs> taking notes. I'm like, this is all so good. And I love how even you just said how, how if you schedule the two hours of time and you like sit down and you focus like no distractions, whatever you can batch create content for two months with five pins a day. That's incredible. So it's totally manageable, especially, um, for all of us photographers currently in the pandemic, right? If we have, if you've never tried Pinterest before and you have this backlog of like images and blog posts and all of that, like this is an amazing way, an amazing tool to just start marketing your business so that you get more, inquiries and bookings for 2022, 2023. And if you start getting more inquiries, that means you can raise your rates because you're in higher demand and then you can start making more money. So absolutely, (laughs) this is all golden. (laughs) I mean, it it is just like, I I feel that nowadays we are very used to like immediate gratification, right? We post an image on Instagram and we get immediate likes, Uh, but you know, Pinterest, the same as SEO is kind of like the long, the long run, right? It's the like a marathon, game, yeah. the long game. There you go. It's, it's, you know, you need to be patient, right? Maybe you get lucky and then, you know, within a month you get a lot of traction, but in reality, you should expect about three to six months to start seeing kind of like a difference. Oh man. Thanks for that reminder. Because as soon as you're like, if we're in a world of instant gratification, I'm like guilty over here. I'm Everybody's like, guilty of yeah. that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank you for that reminder. That was awesome. Um, Okay. I mean, I think that was just like, we have so much information. That was incredible (laughs) uh, to get anyone started. Um, But yeah, everybody who who doesn't know. So uh, Carolina has an amazing course all about Pinterest. It's called The Art of Pinning. Uh, So Carolina, did you want to tell everyone a little bit about it so they can know what to expect? Sure. It is a very simple class. Uh, if you have never heard any of my podcasts, if you've never, you know, if this is the first time that you that you that you're hearing about me, one thing that I want you to know is like I am very very into actionable steps. I don't like a lot of fluff. I like you know <laughs> things that are very <laughs> straight to the point. So that's exactly what my class is. I think that you can do all the modules in about an hour and a half. They have been split into you know different fractions. Some modules are 20 minutes, some modules are five minutes because we literally go straight to the point. Yeah. Um, the class can be it's a great tool for any photographer I think that wedding photographers could definitely benefit from this more easier I would say than any other genre and the reason why is because as a wedding photographer we have so many aspects within a wedding right we have decoration we have getting ready we have you know outfits styles location venue seasons so you can create let's say more content with the same amount of images. I think that for family photographers, you need to work a little bit harder to, you know, to get that, but it still is completely doable. And actually one of the modules in in the class is like a whole strategy just for family photographers on how to use interest in a successful way. Um, the class is self-paced, so you can do it, you know, whenever you feel like doing it, you kind of stop it whenever you feel like stopping it. Once you access the class, you have forever um, access to it. You can, you know, start the class whenever you want to. And every single update that I have made to the class, my students have gotten an update for free. So when I see something new on Pinterest that I think it's important for my students to know, I go and I update the class. Uh, People that have already registered, they don't have to pay for the update. It's already included. Okay. Amazing. I love exactly what you said about actionable steps and teaching. I believe in the same way of teaching. I get straight to the point because everyone's time is so valuable and we all have so much to do running a business. So I love that you do that. Um, and yeah, if you guys go to, 
the tog republic.com forward slash Pinterest. Uh, you'll see the exact breakdown of the course of everything that's included. Um, and you can see exactly how the lessons are broken down. So yeah. So if you, if this is something that interests you and it's totally affordable as well, I mean, if you invest in this, then, uh, as soon as you get that like workhorse pin or two, you'll get that investment back right at like tenfold, 10 times, 20 times over. Right. So it's, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're paying more in, in, in coffees and, you know, delicious pastries than what you pay for this class. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So it's, it's a steal and I would definitely, definitely recommend it. So yeah, if you, you guys are interested, um, go to the tog that's, uh, T O G and then republic.com forward slash Pinterest. And you can get all the info there and you can sign up there. Um, and yeah, Carolina, thank you so much for, for being such an amazing guest. Uh, there's just so much knowledge that you shared here. Um, I'm so grateful for your time and expertise and all of that. Oh, thank you for having me. I really had a great time. Uh, I love talking about Pinterest. I feel that it is like kind of like the step, the stepsister in like, in like a story, you know, in like a Cinderella story and people are focusing. I feel like, like Instagram is kind of like the Cinderella oh, and, yeah. and Pinterest is like, you know, like the stepsister, but oh, Pinterest is such a grateful platform. As I said, you know, you pin something, it lives forever. If you do it correctly, it can continually bring traffic to your website uh I, I just love it and and again it, it's so low maintenance right like I when I was doing it every so often because I had so much work before the pandemic it was just like you know two hours every two months and I created content you know for 60 days I feel like Instagram demands a lot of time from us and the results are not as great as Pinterest I mean again the, the job of Instagram is completely different than the job of yeah. Pinterest but yeah. you know yeah Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Carolina. And yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, no, before we go, Carolina, share where everybody can find you. Well, people can find me on www.talkrepublic.com. The same um, thing for Instagram, TOG Republic. Uh, it's my ad, actually the Talk Republic. I don't even know my own stuff. <laughs> Talkrepublic.com. Uh, if people want to hear more before, you know, committing to the class, I have like five different podcast episodes about Pinterest, why I love it, the client journey, like all kind of information about Pinterest. And if, if they're interested in the class, you know, everything is very detailed on, on the page that you mentioned. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for sharing and hope you have a great day. Thank you, Sir Monica. Same for you. Go and watch some uh, reality TV now. I know, right? <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for hanging out with me and tuning into this episode. If you got value out of it, please feel free to message me on Instagram at Sarah Monica Photo. That's Sarah No H, Monica with a K photo, to let me know. I get so freaking energized hearing from others that what I've said has had a positive impact on their lives. Also, make sure to hit subscribe to the Shine and Thrive podcast to never miss an episode. I'm so grateful for you and I'm sending you all the productive vibes your way so you have the best week ever.